any additions or changes to the agenda as printed? Hearing none. Uh, and I understand for Rosemary, we have four candidates running, two for each open seat. Congratulations. Good luck to all of them. We have two items for discussion tonight, but really, I think the big question we need to decide before we look at the individual items is are we going to have a in person town meeting or a sterling battle? Does that answer that question? Will affect probably both things. So I open up the board. Um, I did send an email out to everybody, some of the pros and cons of each that I could see. Uh, first thing I'm conflicted as well. Yeah. We go along with whatever the majority felt. I will open up the book to individuals. Did the school say they'd allow it? The, I believe the school will allow it. You know, we're, we're still kind of in an ongoing discussion, but um, <coughs> yeah, I think that we're coming to an agreement on that. That they, they do understand our position that we would like people to wear masks, that we will do our best of having extra masks there, trying to get people to wear them, and that we can't, we also can't turn anybody away, so we can't work with them there. Uh, their maximum occupancy. And they, they understand our position and haven't said no. Mr. Chairman? Well, I sent out quite a few texts in the last uh, three or four days to people in the community asking them what they thought about it. Uh, one of the people sent to me, they said this was just sent to me uh, from a Johnson voter, and I tend to agree with their statement. I do appreciate your um, Opinion though, I say yes, mainly because kids are in school and most businesses are open and people are working. So it's not like town meeting puts people at increased risk or exposure to COVID. Everybody is already exposed and they said, my two cents. Uh, but the same person replied to me, uh, if I can find it here. And basically they're saying, some of those things were true, but you know they do go out in public, but they limit their exposure uh, to the guidance, which is like 15 minutes. So if they go to the grocery store or whatever, or wherever they go, they don't spend more than 15 minutes there. And so as we all know that uh, town meeting is gonna last longer than 15 minutes. Uh, so, and then some people that initially were for coming to town meeting have changed their minds. Uh, but I would say it's probably 50 50 of all the people that I polled. Uh, there were, you know, 50 50 yes, 50 50 no. I mean, so it's hard to say. I, I get the impression, you know, that, you know, and I'm not going to presume uh, to speak for the whole board, but I think the board is getting to the point where they don't want to in person tell me. What's your thoughts? First. Well, you know, I tend to agree that a lot of people, you know, and Fauci said today that people have just, you know, got to get with the program that this is just going to be here, you know, for who knows how long. And he also said that he thought that this latest round was going to peak mid-February. So the first of March, it could be different. But unfortunately, we had to make a decision tonight for what is going to be the first of March. So I guess going by what the information that we have, uh, we probably should err on the side of caution. Uh, but um, it also tells me that I think we should have an option for it. And it's it's too bad that we couldn't even poll the people, you know, uh, see what they whether they want to come or not. But we want the maximum participation in this. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of participation any more than we did last year. We didn't have little to none, really, when you get right down to it. We had two informational meetings, correct? Yeah. I think that's all we had, Zoom meetings. It wasn't really that well attended, as I recall. 
Uh, but I'm not in favor of uh, mailing a ballot out, 1,800 ballots. I believe that people, if they if they're timid uh, about COVID, uh, you know, they can always uh, request an absentee ballot. And there are some people that still enjoy in voting in person, like I do, you know. And so, but I wouldn't support uh, mailing out ballots to everybody. Um, yeah, so along the same lines, um, in the best of times, town meeting does exclude people who have to work, um, which is always troubling me, but the tradition is important enough that we keep it going. But in this year, it'll exclude people who are you know, compromised, someone living with someone who is, someone who's uh, living with young kids or people who can't be vaccinated, uh, infants. Um, so I think that plays on my decision. Hospitals and healthcare workers are very overburdened right now and struggling. Uh, hospitalizations in Vermont due to COVID right now are at an all-time high today. And uh, so I think we should err on the side of caution and not do it. I also think if any one of us has to, I mean, one of us or two of us might have to miss town meeting because of COVID, that puts a uh, burden on the other remaining select board members. So if we do have it, we get all that better be prepared to, to stand up and make uh, explain the budget. Thanks, Matt. There is an option. Ah, uh, I could just delay it till the first of June. No, it's on. No. Um, I think we should not have it in person. Um, I don't want to see town meeting go away. I value very much in person town meeting. Say that again. I very much value in person town meeting. Right. Um, but I've thought a lot about all of the events that are still happening now in our community. And the thing that just keeps coming back to me is two things. The voter participation in, in person, even before the pandemic, is much lower than the other numbers you shared. That's one thing. The other thing is, even with the events that are going on, there are a lot of people that go to some of these bigger events. Frankly, even including events I go to, but we're not there for an extended period of time. The longest we're there is an hour, hour and a half, and we're not there for a whole day. And that whole day without being able to have a mask mandate, the whole day alone, and also on top of that, not being able to require a mask mandate, um, I think that's really problematic and puts us well, I don't think it makes us liable necessarily, but um, I think we care about our residents more than that. Okay, I'm certainly sensing the direction, but before I ask for a vote, is there anything that Rosemary or Brian would like to add? Evan, oh, I'm sorry, Evan, I thought you did. <laughs> There's value in it in both ways. Uh, participation is a lot better if we mail on ballots. Um, and if people who feel excluded from in person because they're compromised, there is already a means for them to request an absentee ballot. Uh, I guess my reserves would be on if we had all of our employees catch it because they were there taking votes and everything in the town and being a big pickle and we'd have an outbreak, but we could increase the ventilation in the elementary school, make it as safe as possible, not do food and still have an in-person test. Or we could do it in June, outside. And some communities have done that. I think Belver here did last year. I don't know if we don't want to wait until June because <laughs> I know. It was they vote us down. <laughs> We got no runway with but um, I'll then open it up to Rosemary Bryant. Anything further you guys like to share? 
to set the school before the foster environment would be in the um, library is very small. It's probably half the size of this room, mm -hmm. and we're all crowded right together. And when people come in spurts, they all come together. They don't keep their six feet distance. You'd like to see the boat in here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. We have a way people would come in and they move right out back of them. Yeah. It's a good flow. Yes. Too. This is a better place to go. Right. I don't think I've got too much to add. Um, you know, I'd also like to think about our, our JPs, uh, you know, volunteers that come and help on election day. You know, we've got a lot of older individuals. I don't know what their status is, but they are generally higher risk. Okay. Carl, would you like to add any thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, when can I talk about this? And I've also been sort of pulling my circle, and uh, I think people feel like they want to have a lot of up here and not have a um, in-person town meeting. And, you know, I was just like, well, we've got to bring it back because you know how much I love town meeting, and I put a lot of time and energy into making it as inclusive for families and, and feel, you know, for, for, um, yeah, for people to come and enjoy it, but the more I start thinking about it, the more it's just, yeah, I, I don't think it's the right thing to do this year. And when you think about the tenets of democracy and what they stand for, this, you know, having it in person would just um, not, be, not be the right way to go. So, yeah. and, I, and I agree, I was going to say also that I think that this is a better place to do the polling. Just the flow of space. Thank you. Somebody also told me today uh, what this is worth. And they said, that, well, if somebody gets sick or there is an outbreak because of town meeting, then everybody's going to be up in arms about it. Right. You know, and so uh, just for that alone, and, you know, it's not like we twist somebody's arm to come. We just say it's an open town meeting, but then again, it is sanctioned by the town. And certain people would feel an obligation, I'm sure, uh, to come to it, uh, no matter what. So, you know, initially I was for it. Uh, I guess I could uh, you know, not support an open meeting and uh, just have any kind of battle. Okay, I think we, unless you want to add anything, Don. Okay. Um, from everybody here tonight, I would entertain a motion at this time that the board would like to do the informational meetings are going to be in person. They, they, that's something we can talk about. Our informational meetings last year were via Zoom. All Zoom. But yes. we've not limited ourselves to Zoom yet. We, that is something we could do both. We could do both, and we could wait to decide that till the day or the time. Um, if things are getting better, then maybe having an informational meeting would, you know, they're, they're typically not well attended. So um, we could probably do an in person information. But that's something we can decide at later. Today. But the problem is with that, if you had one, then all of a sudden, everybody and their brother decides they want to come to it. We could not restrict it, right? Yeah, and so chances are, like last year, we already had anybody participate. Was it? There wasn't even thirty, were there? Probably. It, it, I, th I think there was less. I think around thirty. Around thirty people. Do you honestly. remember, Cox? Uh, not remembering any number. Um, remembering our Friday. <laughs> Zoom calls during the beginning of COVID. So they were well attended. Um, so we were entertaining them too. Yeah. So Anybody remember how many showed up? You're making the motion? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And what's your motion? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that we not have time meeting in person this year. Uh, 
I think did you say too much information on me? Yes. Okay. Yep. We only this is what we did last year. We were only required, required to do one. one. Yep. I don't know. Why did we do two? Just for uh, What's that? The ATP. Oh, okay. We thought there'd be a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think it was that, and also it was the first time we were doing Australian ballot, so we thought there was, might be kind of a lot of questions about what that would be like. I'm hoping that other folks disagree with me on it. I really don't know. What, what's your motion? One or two information? Two. Okay, there is a motion on the floor to go Australian ballot with two information leadings. Is there a second? Second. Is the motion is second. Any discussion? I feel like being a stinker. Maybe, maybe you make the final decision and have a tie here. <laughs> 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 I will. I'll vote. <laughs> you had you wrote events for a lot of years on most things. But the most controversial. I had to vote. <laughs> <laughs> What's board thought? They want to go with the two information leads. I do. But you got to take the vote on it. The motion is on the floor. Yep. Or you can amend it. It just makes it easier for more people to get their vote. Because they're not going to get the vote first. Or discuss it on the floor. Any other discussion? See none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Aye. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Okay. Old budget. Uh, I don't know. Problems, right? If I can direct us, I think it might be helpful to talk about the. Well, we can start with one and we'll, we might have to jump back and forth a couple times. I believe we will. All right. So, major changes since the last time you read this. Uh, Susan was able to give me a hand with this, and uh, our estimated end of the year for FY22, there were a few changes there. Uh, so, that brings our annual surplus. Down, yep. down to uh, fifty thousand four hundred ninety-eight dollars. So that changes our proposed uh, reserves for dealing with the excess funds. Uh, the last page for the budget. Well, the proposal is to put a hundred thousand to reduce the taxes for the next fiscal year. Yep. Twenty five in tax anticipation, twenty five in highway capital and building grounds, and then the reappraising one put forty three in. Yes. But this number would change by eighteen thousand dollars ish if the board approved purchasing a new trailer in this fiscal year. So would that come out of the reappraisal reserve fund? We would decide that later date. If we could but don't we aren't we the only thing that's gonna hold us is the amount we transfer to reducing taxes. We will have to do that. If our other estimates come in less than what we're anticipating, we could rearrange how much goes into which fund and where we take it out. So that would be a future board decision. Well, if we did it in February, that would be the current uh, fiscal year, and then we reduce the amount of estimated cash on Yeah, that would reduce the 50,000 cash on the imbalance from this year to 32. 32 is going to be about this. What we could assume uh, about 15000 for that purchase of uh, this year uh, and take that out of our anticipated service. I'm not saying we should. We should. I'm just saying it was a discussion at the last meeting. We should have an idea. Yeah. Uh, we, we easily could do that. Uh, 
And it would be easier to do that, I guess, in advance than it would be to do it after the fact. Although, again, if we're doing it after we pass a proposed budget, we still will be able to change how we spend the money. Uh, that, yeah, the, the one that we're really held to is the amount to reduce taxes. That's the one that we can't make modifications to without uh, running a deficit. Uh, but I can work in the, the 15,000 estimated for the cost of the trail. Um, let's see. Made another revision to library that they're anticipating a little bit less in grant funds. But that was no change in the bottom line. It was a reduction in income and a reduction in expenditures. I'm still not sold on paying an employee another, another hour so we can spend $10,000 on health insurance. I think we spend quite a lot of money on that library as it is without that big increase. Is that what the projected uh, portion of their health insurance would be? Uh, I don't have the full report. Let me look up where the line of it is. And it's not the whole insurance line item. It did get right, it's, a, it's a, about ten thousand dollars more for this. That is prorated. That's not a. a Let's get payment plan. Uh, that, that employee does not have health insurance right now, so they've not selected a plan. So they could select a different plan that could cost less. So but you're yeah. estimating the worst case? Again, I don't have the word sheet in front of me, but uh, and I don't remember if I'm estimating the average or if I'm estimating worst case. Well, the 2021 actual was 13,558. Now it's 23,067. So, for all practical purposes, that's 10,000 bucks. What's they were asking for? 14. Initially, because they were, we were thinking about the full 100%. Now, this is 75% of a, of a uh, plan, okay. correct? Where do you get 75%? Probably 75% would be if they worked 30 hours. This is if they worked 25. So, that's Five eight. Uh, well, anyway, you look at it. I don't think we can afford it. Anyway, so, I'll probably be in the minority. But well, I think, to all fairness to the library, that was a discussion we should have had when they brought the budget in. It's a little late in the game to tell them now we're going to you know, do something different with their budget. Oh. You had told them that, that was a steep increase. Yeah, and I, and I did what I thought was a due diligence and pushed back. Um, but the board, as a whole, decided that we were going to accept it. Well, and now it's our job to defend it. When we talked about increasing it on the prorated amount, but I think that somebody is said that the library, the library board of trustees would have to approve that. Yes, amendment. So we already amended it, but did they ever even approve accepting that? They did. Is that email never made it to me? I'm sorry to report it out to the board, but it's fine. I just want to say the their board did communicate back to me that they approved it. And this is appropriate about it. It is. That's got to be worst case scenario. $10,000 for prorate. That's it's probably going under that. Well, the original presented to us was. Pretty much the same. It was thirteen thousand dollars. It was right around thirteen thousand dollars. It was originally presented to us. And if we're talking about five eighths of that, that's about ten thousand dollars. So I think the top was pretty close. So the projector. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't. Mm. I didn't make any change to the plan that I was projecting with. I just don't remember if I was. 
on the expense of buying a lot of the average choice or how much you the most expensive choice. For the selection. Yep. Yeah. Right. Still on my Oh, I nobody eighty one hundred would be five eighths. Okay. Nobody would be surprised to hear that I support it strongly still. Um towards every penny for uh youth education and literacy in our community. The library is a great asset. Um and this is an issue of fairness and puts our part-time uh youth librarian on par with our part-time rec coordinator. So it doesn't make sense to me that we would allow one to have a benefit and not an equal benefit for a fairly similar job. I didn't say it was not fair. I believe it's fair. I just still $10,000 at prorated rate seems high. I can't change the insurance company's rates. So I was just wondering. I wasn't responding to you directly. I was oh. making my view you know that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to provide this directly. Is there any other notable changes? Um, it's not a notable, notable change. This has been in the right funds. I don't remember if we talked about it specifically, but line 302 is a new one this year, uh, specifically for uh, reserve funds contribution. Um, with Lisa in the position, uh, she's been doing a lot about getting grants and obtaining things for. Uh, rec improvements, uh, and it's been kind of our maintenance line has been pretty ad hoc. Uh, and she's working on uh, developing a more long term capital improvement plan for the library or excuse me, for the recreation facilities. Uh, we have a uh, reserve funds for rec, uh, but it hasn't been getting a lot of contributions for the last several years. So we're proposing to start making specific contribution to it to help upkeep improvements. Shouldn't say upkeep. It's not for maintenance. It's for replacements and future. I mean, there's a lot of money in the reserve fund right now, and when the rent gets going again. I know that when I was on rec, I was very much, and I probably set up this thing. I'll just speak for myself. Um, I was very interested in local funding rec, and I was able not to add expenses this year for putting money into the reserve fund until we get more revenue um, as the rents are growing, because I think that our revenue will be higher in following years. So, this is a proposed budget. Do you? Yeah, I think that maybe the revenues will still be enough in the COVID age that revenues won't be in next year. Yeah, I think that I think as I think actually this right now things are starting to lift enough that there's beginning to be opportunities for revenues. Um, so yeah, I, think so. I don't. I mean, this is a new line that the truth that you know and I feel like it's about the time to get fired up. But the rest of the whole thing, leave it in and take it out. You're proposing so. taking it out. I'm proposing taking it out for this year. I'm fine with that. Well, the deal is um, you're talking about the reserve fund, mm -hmm. 2000 bucks for the on, on line uh, 302. Yeah, on the reserve fund. So the deal is, if we had an in-person town meeting and somebody went with the budget, if, to my understanding, the budget from the floor, somebody could say to the board, what, what's this line here? This $2,000, I don't think it's a good idea. And so somebody could make a motion to strike it. They get a second, then the board would have to remove that from the budget, correct? No, not exactly. No, they can reduce the budget by they can now. reduce our total budget. Right, but reduce it by two thousand. And uh, but if we were smart, we would probably take the two thousand out of that. We would listen probably to the will of voters. Right. So because if we're not having an internal uh, meeting this year, it doesn't give people the option basically to do this 
unless they vote the whole budget down. Correct? Mm -hmm. So it's best to get rid of it right now. That's fine. Okay, we'll pull it out, Brian. Where was the line item added for the trailhead proposed? Uh, expense. We just have to find it. I have, to, I have difficulty finding it. That's what I'm asking. I know there's so many numbers and words in there. <laughs> Line 168 is the expense side. Well, that's the trailhead grant. It does say trailhead building grant. We can change the name on it. But what's so, it's now a welcome center, not a trailhead, but the, we're repurposing on an existing line of those. Because uh, it's. And it's not a grant expense. Yeah. And it's. Uh, it's just, it's close enough that it's convenient for us not to have to add new lands that we have to track into the future. Uh, it's paying for basically the same structure. So a portion of this $9,050. I'm looking for the revenue side right now. Give me a second. Put that under miscellaneous. Did we? I don't think we did. Yeah. And there is a four hundred dollar. Wow. Or it would be under other other. I would expect it to be under other. Is that under Miscellaneous reimbursements number 41. Oh, yeah, 41. That jumps up to 47,000. Yeah, you're right. That works. Yeah. I, I guess I would uh, question on 168. The estimated year end is forty thousand. Is what we have basically spent the whole forty five thousand by year end. Tax percent forty five thousand. Yeah, so that estimated year end should be forty five thousand, and that would reduce five thousand going over into the proposed budget. Correct. Yeah, that should. Well, on the revenue side, right. on the revenue side, we were proposing getting four thousand five hundred or fifty dollars from miscellaneous revenue. That's that's what makes that one a little bit miscellaneous reimbursements. So, are we proposing to spend? All of the money on our miscellaneous reimbursements on the trailhead plus five thousand dollars of the town money. Or are we proposing that hopefully the town will get four thousand dollars in reimbursements towards that specifically? I guess that's almost a little gray. So we would hope to get four thousand dollars in contribution towards the uh, welcome center, and the town would pay an additional. Five thousand out of our coffers uh, for that purpose. I know we talked about the five thousand at a different meeting. I just still don't think that we should be doing that. But basically, what the budget currently shows is four thousand coming in and nine thousand going out. 
Cook, uh, your proposed budget, correct? Yes. And estimate year in, you're shy by five thousand. That's kind of a wish in one hand and crap in the other. We're just hoping that four thousand is going to come. Right? Well, if the four thousand doesn't come, we wouldn't be obligated to spend it. Okay. Any more than the. Uh, the, the, the request in the budget, we've got a little bit in, in there to cover money that we think we're getting, but the, the, the specific request from the taxpayers is to spend $5,000. If we submit this budget, we're yeah. requesting from the taxpayers to spend $5,000 on a project that it was agreed they wouldn't pay for. Yes. Okay. What, I understand. I have a different take on that, of course, but we've had that conversation. Right. You know, being on the board, that you've been a big advocate for that. Are you going to come to board meetings when they discuss that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, phase two is uh, committed to seeing that through. Um, so Mark Alexander has committed an email to uh, funding another 15000 with this 5,000, which is okay. so, where we need to be. So basically, the 5,000 is good faith from the town, and you give 15,000. So probably, if the town didn't give 5,000, he might not be interested in giving 15,000. Is that a true statement? No, it's not a true statement. Okay. okay. Give it regardless. All right. So, the budget, we have to... I, you know, we, we, have, we have had this conversation numerous times, and I'm being a dead horse, but. You know, I'm going to defer over to uh, Evan, you know, that this was not going to be a cost to town. It, then it got turned into a phase one and a phase two. And it was supposed to be just one project. Now it's got, as I said, phase one, phase two. I think it's a great asset. But everything more that we put down there will be burden on the taxpayers in the future. So I'm not against doing more down there, but I think that the board, which will be a new board next year or in a couple months anyways, should hold true on promises that was made of a board before I was on it. Beth, thoughts? Uh, yeah. I propose we strike 5,000 from Line one sixty eight. The proposal will strike five thousand one sixty eight. Sorry, you were looking for one. Well, no, I really don't need a second. No, I'm just I'm just need a consensus of the board members. Oh, um, well, fully support this five thousand dollars. And I do feel like it's something that. It, I've given all my reasons before, so I want to not. Well, I don't love the idea of spending it, but it's it's a small fraction of the total spend. And I think I heard that maybe we can raise money for it, and I would take that as a good big effort. I support you again for that reason. And I would as well support keeping it. Um, I think the worst, you know, when we build these budgets, we're doing a forecast and there was un some unforeseeable events that happened. The Alexanders in good faith gave us 45,000 to do a project, which we thought we could do well within 45,000. And due to the rising cost of all the materials, uh, it could not happen. And if they're now committing out of 15,000 or some amount, um, I guess I would like to see it through and finished. And I think the voters would appreciate it to the taxpayers. So I would be in favor of the 5,000. Kyle? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to you said, Eric, after that. Also, I don't know if you've heard the news that a lot of the rail trails may be completed. Finally, they were committed to completing that this coming year. So I just feel like if any of these welcome centers, rail, you know, trailheads are going to be just really, really valuable and 
ultimately bring good attention to our town, good economic development, potentially build our tax base. <laughs> I mean, that's the book of all this stuff, right? Yeah. That it it's, it's a whole. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting way to come. So, as a taxpayer, that's a good segue to tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the tech center is a friends of the rail trail they're looking for public input so uh, that would be a good place to go on into is anybody from the select board attending that i'm planning on it again tomorrow night. i can't i don't think i can but um i know one thing that they had mentioned on their agenda was talking about ways to support uh, the rail trail, I believe. There's a zoom I don't understand too. why all the towns have taken on the burden of mowing the rail trail. It is a state right away. We don't know what the state The state wants the right away. The state should maintain the right away. We're taking on liability and expense on a right away that is not ours. And that's everything. Mm -hmm. so, there is Zoom available. <laughs> That is a good I can thing. try it. It's the personal stuff going on. It is a good thing to maybe make mention of because the original request in was that we would mow it once a year. Now they want us to do it twice a year. Yeah. No, they want us to do it more than twice a year. Right. But the two, three, four, whatever next thing you know, they want us to do it once a week. We should start mowing Rule 15 uh, and on and see. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Brian, that anything? covers my. Well, I would suggest not voting on adopting this yet until we go to the next item on the agenda. I'm sorry, I sure. thought of talking about mowing. That would be me. We talked about mowing and expensive mowing last year. Yes. Where is that? Mowing. Yeah, we talked on our summer road, though, yes. Yes. Uh, line three sixty four. Uh, we did increase it a little bit. Well, we increased it because of not the rail trail. We okay since. No, th this one is mostly most of this is going to renting a. Uh, the boom mower in order for us to do roadside. Are you happy, Jeff? Yep. Okay. Uh, we don't have a great plan for continuing to mow the rail trail itself due to uh, our new tractor doesn't fit over the bridges uh, that the rail trail uses. So. So it's very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, um, That's good. before That's we drop this whole budget, I would suggest we look at the next article. Is oh, sorry, I got one more. Another change? Uh, not a change yet, but we were discussing about possibly including something for the trailer out of this year's estimated end of year. Uh, okay. We talked about that in very loose ter terms earlier. How do we feel about actually making that change? Uh, I could increase the uh, small equipment current year, like three ninety seven by fifteen thousand dollars, or just show it as a uh, expense under the estimated uh, cash. Yeah. <laughs> Ford's pleasure there. What is estimated between that 16 and 40? Well, this is 50 plus another 168, which is 168 is the main, right? Yes, 168. He lost me here. Okay, go back on page with the next to last one. Page seven. Available at line 473, available uncommitted cash on hand balance. Oh. This is actually the books of reference. I was looking at his actual uh, 
a quick small quote of purchase line 397 that he was discussing and maybe I got lost. Okay. Yeah. That, that is one suggestion that probably we could do it that way or we could take it out of our estimated cash on hand. Uh, on the last page. You didn't want to start That's where I would like to get. We we call it small equipment. Uh, but it's basically, it's equipment that isn't that's usually small that is not part of our capital plan, mm -hmm. and the trailer is not currently part of our capital plan. Mm -hmm. We take that out of the uncommitted cash on hand. That's not actually cash on hand, right? We yes. Our actual cash on hand is closer to fifty thousand. Four ninety about four seventy nine. Well, that's estimated. Yeah, the four seventy nine is your estimated. It's the estimated actual cash on hand. Right. Yes. The actual. That's like we shouldn't be thinking about the one sixty eight as our money. But that's real. That is real. One sixty eight is our our real if we get the liquid taxes. It's the real, not real, real. <laughs> <laughs> It's not tangible. It's a real number. <laughs> it's not the number on the bank slip. It's a real asset, but it's not. It may not be tangible cash. But, but typically we do get it. Most of it all. I mean, what, what would you say we? What percentage of that uh, uh, taxes do we get? So eventually, you do get 95% of it. Just it's all about timing at the end of the year, though, right? Is that what it boils down to? Yeah. So, if we're talking about timing at our lowest point at any time leading up to the end of the year, we should consider we have $50,000 cash. Because we will get payments in after that, understood. But that's going to be our lowest balance. Well, Fifty thousand is the current. So, if we were to add the uh, fifteen eighteen thousand, the small equipment that would reduce the fifty thousand to eighteen thousand. Right. And it's still, I guess. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh. And if we are concerned about uh, delinquent taxes, that fifty thousand is more likely to be have a greater representation of delinquent taxes in it because that does assume that our taxes are paid this year, and we will have some amount of delinquent taxes. We don't have anywhere near that kind of money for taxes. What's that? We don't have uh, anywhere near that amount of money in delinquent taxes. No, some of the, the, of the 168,000, some of it's delinquent, some of it is uh, the actual cash we had on hand when the books were closed out on um, June 30th. Right, but well, we've got less than $30,000 in delinquent taxes. Yeah, I'm guessing that's right now. Yeah. For that year or all that, For last year. For last, last year. year. It's less than 30,000. And we usually run about 140-ish thousand. At the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. My only point was that they, they will both include some portion of delinquent taxes of assets and not actual Um, you know, there'll be some some difference, some true enough. You know, fifteen thousand dollars is not going to be enough to make us not a deficit. You know, we, we can make this assumption. Well, fifteen long. My point was that if we're going to cash flow, fifteen long, but if something major broke. 
And we had already spent the 15. There was two major things that probably yeah. happened and we spent the 15. Then, like, I was thinking from a cash flow perspective, what is the safer time to buy the trailer? But understanding more on this journey today. So, what is the safest place to buy the trailer? Yeah. yeah. For, from a from a need perspective, the best time to buy it is as soon as possible. From a cash flow perspective, the, the most convenient time to buy it would probably be second quarter of the new fiscal year. Uh, but that. And that, that we were good at all, all the things we talked about last week. Yep. So if you look at line 480, the 218,000. If we reduce our estimated cash on hand by eighteen thousand, what we would we're estimating for the total would be then two hundred thousand, and of that we're only committing the hundred thousand to apply for the use of taxes. So the other hundred left, we have some wiggle room. But it's not. But it's not hard to tax. But I understand the point. Yes. Yeah. We will collect a little bit less in taxes on the assumption that we're going to be gaining cash from some of our, our assets. And believe it or not, we usually, I think when we build our budgets, we go a little bit conservative on revenue and a little bit liberal on the spending. Mm -hmm. And when the books close, we usually end up with some amount of surplus. Yeah. That sounds a good question in practice. <laughs> Figures on the spreadsheet can show anything. So, would we like to account for that in our proposed budget? So, the question for the board do you guys want to put it in the small equipment as a this year expense? Basically, February. Yeah, yeah, that would be the question. Or that's a preference. If we're going to spend it in February, anyways, we probably should show it in the current year. It's going to make that line jump a bit of it. Yep. Yes, maybe the year end or what lines are we trying to find it again? Uh, seven. 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 Yeah, seven. Okay. So it will make that a significant jump. Thirty-two hundred right now. I'm just twenty-one. I'm anxious to get it. It's on. It's a piece of equipment on the road. That it's kind of hard. And I think it's not really responsible to run it. We have a choice. Could you sort of speak up, please? Think, given the state of the current trailer, it's more responsible to replace it sooner than later for our operators and for our own liability. The trailer, you said. Yes. Oh, yes. I thought we had discussed that last time and didn't want that uh, substandard thing on the road. Well, we seem to be discussing it again. We were gonna I guess we do. We we're going to show it in the book. Right. Are you? There's no question that we need it. That's, that's a given. So if there's no objection, we'll tuck it in under the uh, current year's purchase uh, small equipment. Yeah. You don't think you need it, please. Okay. All right. Thank you for that for all of us. Little derailed, but I wanted to get that settled. Um, so going this. back to the town meeting warning, this is we're going to have to undergo quite a few changes. Uh, we change to uh, well, with the town warning and mailing out ballots, is that accounted for in expenses? I think you uh, did, did you, Rosalie? Or are we getting reimbursed by the state? Mm -hmm. So the tax increase going to be two cents, right? Uh, with the budget as it's drafted right now, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to stick with. Yeah, no, so. well, we just made a few changes to it tonight, so it's not exactly what we're going to stick with. Us. Right, it's close. We need to yeah, make some decisions on the rest of this land, which could affect us. Well, depending if you guys want to fill them up. I don't want to mail them all out. 
So, well, what do we have to do? The warning that's before us is going to have to have radical changes, obviously. Um, we're going to have to have it shown here where we'll have informational meetings. Um, what's this? Just a sample. Oh. oh, this is the postcard. Yes. Okay. So let, let's cover Rosemary's suggestion first, because that was that's related to your question Evan, about what are we doing about mailing out ballots. An alternative to mailing out ballots could be to mail out these postcards with instructions on how to obtain a ballot. Postcard mailing is a lot less expensive than mailing a ballot with a return envelope uh, to all voters. And if, you know, I, I think it's a really good compromise and, and a good bang for the buck. Yeah, and last year, because we didn't, we can't send these new ballots. People were confused why they didn't mind this new ballot. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion over that last year. Yeah. And since we, yeah, but remember I said we don't control the school ballot. What happens with the school the school ballot? But if somebody requests it, then you can send it out. But <laughs> does this have to be the language that's used? Or? No. Okay. It's just a, a complaint. Just okay. suggest I just asked because. On the part the second line where it says the Secretary of State's office will automatically mail ballots in November for the general election. I think that's totally fine, but I would just recommend that that be the last sentence. And then first sentence be you can request ballots by mail for your town meeting and the primary as the first line since those are the first events. But we're not encouraging people to vote by absentee. We're requiring if they want to vote to be by that's a good point. But I like this idea. This doesn't prevent a single person in our town from voting. The people that want to be a part of the discussion, vote, have their voice heard, are going to every registered voter will get this right. Well, I say say I want someone to put them in the watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is reasonable. I object to the mailing out of all votes in November, but nothing I can do about it. Well, that's a good one. Well, yeah. What's everyone's thoughts? So let me just read out what, took, what Adam just said. So, and so the second paragraph would be if you choose to vote, if you choose to vote, you may request ballots by mail for the town meeting and the primary. Do we have to approve the wording of this meeting of this? You think that's confusing the way that's written back? Thank you for telling me. Eric. But if you think that's confusing, start. Go ahead. If you choose to vote, you may request ballots by mail for a town meeting and for the primary. Well, for town meeting period, you may also request for the primary and like that. And then the Secretary, Secretary of State of State's office will automatically mail ballots in the event of election. But that's if they choose absentee, right? Yes. There is no choice. We don't have a town meeting, it will be by absentee. No, I'm no, it'll be. Oh, I guess you could do it in person. Mm -hmm. I think maybe before we get down in the week, we need to be because we don't have to decide tonight on the exact wording of this. We can really wordsmith it quite a bit later. Um, is the concept something that would be supported? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. In lieu of a, a mailing out all ballots. Yes. I think so. I don't know. I haven't really thought through that. Um, uh, it's just too easy to request an absentee ballot, really. It's too easy. You don't mean it's too easy. You too easy. It's so easy. It's, so, it's easy. It's easy to request an absentee ballot. Okay. We don't have to. It's like too easy. I think it, there's never there are too easy to vote. Uh, that's my first comment. But secondly, I would be okay with this. I guess I just want to make sure that there is no question about what this says, uh, whatever that means. So, um, yeah, we can see another version of it. Your thoughts? I fully support it. Okay. So I'm hearing the whole board pretty much. Right. Okay. That's good. So we'll do that. 
and maybe within how over long how how long before do you need to send these out? Two weeks before accounting. Oh, before that. When does when does voting open? When does absentee voting open? Supposed to have the ballots twenty days before the month. So in two weeks. Okay, so about two weeks. So maybe we can have a we can take that up at our work session. Okay. Why we do that? Can I just make a yes? Um, they, they look pretty tiny, and I, I worry that people would just. It, it'll be a postcard. Yeah, postcard. It'll postcard. Be postcard. It's the size of a postcard. Okay. okay. But maybe. This is the word as best you can be becoming an email. I don't know, like proper form or something, just so that people are keeping an eye out. Do you want that? No, that's okay. I just, uh, I, I'm just saying, you know, the more that you can communicate with these clients. We'd probably get like a green or red or some kind of color card stock for them also so they're you know, pretty visible in, in the mail. But uh, yes, yeah. I think there's a good compromise for saving all the money. These are significantly cheaper than mailing ballots. So that does also give us a little bit of room for doing things like. You know, if we were concerned about maybe upsizing them a little bit or using colored paper or things like that. In that spirit, I'd like to see it in the news and citizen. We can yeah. take out an ad. I don't know that we'll need to take out an ad. I'm, I'm talking to them tomorrow about, about what we're doing for town meetings, so we'll be able to plug the postcards for that article and uh, I'll try and work it in another time or two. And all towns are doing this, so people should be well aware that it's going to be. Oh, yes, you're on the Yeah. Uh, okay, so a bunch of these articles we're going to consider now with the changes, um, carrying some rates of compensation for town officers to so some of the articles we propose putting in here. Uh, and I'll, I'll first jump right to the uh, Nonprofits. And the whole intent here was so the voters could have a, an ability to amend out one of these if they so chose. But there will be no opportunity by a starting ballot to amend. This will be an all up or down vote. So, with that in mind, is that something we want to pull back into our regular budget? No. Yes. Yeah. I would say leave it as a separate article. Okay, I would. I'll support this side going back into our regular budget. And the second question would be on the. Uh, well, so then that changes our our budget. Then, yep, it will. It's going to go up another penny and a half. Wait, the impact well. to the taxpayers is the same. Now. Um, and then the uh, on the appropriate forty thousand for an economic community and economic development. Um, do we want to put that back into our budget or leave that as a standalone? Oh God! I would leave that as a standalone. Oh good. Yeah, I would just caution that uh, without the opportunity to explain it in. In person town meeting, I think it would pass because we could explain what the intent was for it um, as a standalone and a strong ballot. I would not <coughs> expect it. I would not think the likelihood is as high that it would pass. Who knows? If it's low enough. So is that the board's wishes to leave it as a standalone? Yeah, I would just say that. I I'm not sure the board is quite clear on what the intent of it is. Specifically, very generally, yes, but. Well, we're going to be able to share one from Cambridge, right, Brian? I've had some conversations about that. I don't think that's going to work out. I that. We'd have something to fall back on if uh, that article was voted down. 
Well, you could, we'd still need the money. Well, true, but you could find the money some other place, I'm sure. <laughs> we always do. 40,000? Well, no, it wouldn't cost 40,000. If you were working in concert with Cambridge and just doing a, a project uh, here and there, it wouldn't cost anywhere near that kind of money. Oh, I think it would. Yeah, that would. There's a, yeah, well, there's a lot of different ways to get spent. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave it out as an a individual ballot. Is that everyone's? Fine. Fine with that. Okay. And then uh, obviously, Article 9, that would have to be removed. Yep. I'm talking to somebody the other day that they knew a town over in New Hampshire that their select board gets $6,000 a piece. Imagine that. We need a raise. So what does that mean there? Does that mean no? Does so mean, where does that go back in for compensation for towns? It's just with approving our budget, we've already put in the current uh, compensation. Which was status quo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, no, but from the floor, somebody could say, "Well, I think you know the chairman ought to get two thousand, yeah. and the regular select board members get fifteen hundred." There's no vehicle for that with this kind of work. Right. So, so we just have to take it out. Yeah. Okay. Does that pretty much address everything? Brian? It addresses everything that I had. You're going to set dates for informational meetings? Yep, yeah, we got to do that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we had. It has to be within 10 days, right? Of yeah. Yes. We're, we're going to hold two. So we have some freedom for choosing one, but one of them must be within 10 days. Might be a little. The 21st just, is our regular meeting. So we're discussing a date, but we didn't really discuss the format. It's an information. Well, well, when I said I'm right here, and you said they could be Zoom, the board would have to decide. We'll have, to, we'll have to make it available by Zoom. And Probably the only way I could attend that. Because of the situation. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. In an ideal world, right? Yeah. Well, I think, like, like slide board meetings, I think, uh, well, I mean, having the Zoom option, but having an in person option for people, I think, is helpful. Yeah. It might be worthwhile if we're going to have a lot of audience participation to just do Zoom for the whole thing. Uh, because Zoom, it's easier to administer Zoom instead of in, in, yeah, as a hybrid meeting. We have, though, when we're kind of set up over there and we've got, you know, I can sit at the computer, works. So we can do it that way too. We could all, all meet here, project on the wall. Yeah, have the big screen and just like yeah. you do on our yeah. yeah. So that that's a pretty good solution. And I think that most people can hear us reasonably well when we do it that way. Do we are we still held to the requirement of providing a physical location? So that is one of the removing that is one of the bills that was has gone before the government. I don't believe that he signed that one yet, but I could be. So we might have to have some present here as well as on the Zoom. It, we, yes, we might have to. Okay. I guess the second, that's an unknown right now. Uh, but the question is, when would you want to do information meetings? And as Monday is our regular meeting, we would probably want to look at maybe Tuesday. One second. That would be within the 10 days. I like Tuesday the 22nd as one of them because that's a good, you know, one week from today. That's a really good reminder for. I'll be able to. Yeah. A more yeah. You can, we could accommodate a board member on Zoom. Yeah. Regardless. I'm just saying, be pretty flexible around my time. Yeah. What did she do? Doctors are so good anytime <laughs> between tomorrow and June 5th. Okay. <laughs> That's good. They consider that perfect. <laughs>
uh, for a second meeting date. You know, we could use town meeting day. We could, but a lot of people would be voting that. I think we might have problems with that because you're not supposed to have anything, a meeting on the day of voting. For okay. Going about. I, I guess I'm not. I'm not familiar with enough with how to do Australian only, but I, I think you're right. That sounds familiar. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, you know, we're encouraging Australian uh, you know, voting. Um, so I guess to the point somebody brought up that we can always have one of those information informational meetings outside of the, beyond the 10 days, right? Yeah. So even the week prior into the 15. I would say a week prior, do it on the 15th or do it on the 25th, where we're holding it again. Just before uh, the trustees, I think are going to have no. Yeah, I can't do that. So that's okay. Yes. Yeah. On Friday? Yeah, they're like Fridays. Oh. They have nothing. A bunch of meetings. What time do you know? I need to start at six. Okay, so we overlap or conflict. Okay, so that might not work then. Okay. We have a number of people watching our meeting tonight. Were we set up to take questions from anybody if they want to ask a question? No. no. We're not set up for that. No. That's too bad. Uh, we, we can reconsider it, but some time ago we had said that we wanted to limit the questions from uh, people who were not attending. We, we agreed to that. Yeah, I know. But I, it's, I know it was, but it, I don't know. Um, the 16th. I kind of question that myself because you do have a lot of people that may not want to come for various reasons and they do have questions and they are taxpayers. So I think the new board should consider that. Well, if there was anybody who wanted to speak to one of our meetings, if they reached out ahead of time, we would make special arrangement. I know, but that seems a little cumbersome. Um, so we're going to the 16th now. If you wanted to have it on the 15th for that, that would be okay. Just saying. Um, but, you know, whatever you want to do. It's fine. I'm just but saying. People will have their reports by the 16th. They well, will or won't? They will not. Will not. Yeah. Well, maybe we don't need to. That is I did, but you know, we could start into the wire this year because we first Tuesday is Monday. I would doubt they have a report by the 16th. You want to change your home? Well, I get a sense of folks before we do that. You said the trustees are meeting on the 25th? Yes. Okay. The board. Do the 26th? On Saturday. What's that with her? On the side of it? Yeah. You did last year that last year on the weekend. Yeah. Oh, you are so overwhelming. Wonderful. Attended. <laughs> okay. 22nd, 26th. Tuesday and Saturday. That's right. Okay. What time on the Saturday? 2 p.m. Get at. Oh. In the middle of the day, what time do you there's work to be done. I'm not retired here. What time do you want it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Six six eight 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 eight. Eight. I'm not doing anything. Let's say four o'clock in either. the morning. Four a.m. Yeah, yeah, four a.m. Yeah. is fine with me. I could handle that. Okay, two p.m. Eric. I'm asking the question. That was just someone I threw up. Yeah, I would okay. suggest two p.m. or ten a.m. Morning or afternoon. Four p.m. Oh my God. 4 p.m. <laughs> you don't know what Saturdays are, don't you, Eric? <laughs> Never you've been retired for so long. I figured you forgot which day of the week it is. Do you know what day of the week it is half the time? <laughs> Every day. You do. Yes, I do. I forget. I can't remember. Was that Tuesday? <laughs> you better go and have a seat. Did you say 10 or 10? Alzheimer's or something. 
I would say, I don't care. So, so I that. Yeah. 4 p.m. it is. 4 p.m. Yeah. Okay. I always know what day it is. Maybe the date I might not <laughs> <laughs> it is. The 22nd, six or seven. I get confused. Or seven. something else. Right. They're all the seven. Six. Seven. seven. You want seven of that? Yes. Sounds good. Seven on when? 22nd. Okay. Uh, now we do, huh. we do need to approve a warning and Budget is the board comfortable approving with changes made, or do they want to see the changes before we adopt? I'm sorry, talking about budget now. Both. What the warning is going to change, and the word is going to change. That article six. We need. I think by statute we need a. Yeah, that's why we have to. Oh, so that's what we're that's we could do that at the same time we do the other information. It doesn't have to be its own information. No, no. Oh, so we're not the ones who presenting the information though, right? For this modified union vote talks about Walter and so don't we need their schedule to set the informational meeting? They'll be invited. It's up to the interested parties to ask you or be against the article. We're providing the opportunity. Okay. Warning isn't going to have two substantial changes. Article 9 is being deleted and Article 11 is being deleted. I'm going to make sure Dan is there too. Well, you're going to have to put words in about the information you need. Yeah. And you're going to have to take out. Take out everything about coming to the school. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can do one article for all the officers. Yeah, I have to look at the oh, yeah. draft last year. So there is going to be some. There's going to be a decent amount of difference in here. Um, when do we have to have this both adopted and signed? It could be posted Friday. Yeah, I say signed Thursday. That's... So could we. You could sign it Wednesday night. Wednesday night. What's that? It's six o'clock. That means the board stops on the get together quarter of six and just yeah. adopting the budget and the warning. Okay. Okay. Wednesday. Wednesday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday we're joining. We have that joint. Oh, traditional. No. Yeah, yeah, I do it after. Hmm? That one do it after. The trustees are meeting at five. Oh, well, where are they meeting? Up here, it's in there. Okay. So we could meet downstairs. It's us the board's um, preference. Rosemary, you have to basically have to attest. Yeah, that's actually exciting. But yeah, you don't need to witness on sign. Uh, okay, quarter six downstairs. Uh, Wednesday night. Sounds good. We'll adopt both of these. Is that a select board meeting? And then we it will be a select board yep. meeting. Joint meeting. Yeah. Can we come up here? Can I go back and clarify something real quick? Sure. Like you were mentioning about the uh, nonprofits, those are actually in the 23 budget right now. Uh, they're in there, they're not uh, reflected in the total. They're not reflected. The total will change. Thanks for the total change. Thanks for that. Because it, it's in I didn't take them out because I didn't have any in place to put them. Okay. Yeah. Thought I asked him. understood that. Yeah, we just we have we have we always have them here, so moving them someplace else is a little difficult, and I hadn't completed it yet. Huh? Uh, and now we're not doing it. Okay. It's a 
a very smart option. Good. So, okay. the 40,000 is that that isn't in here? Right. That is not in, in the budget right now. The 40,000 request would be in addition to our, our budget. Okay. And that's without any it is. Um, that is a uh, major part of the joint meeting. Okay, I was going to say that there is a very good one. Yeah, about yeah. 23,000. Yeah. Okay. One cent raises 23,000. So it's going to be approximately two cents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other? Yeah. Any further business? No. Any further business? If not, we're negative. Any further adjourn? No, we'll be at 6%. Thank you, Donald. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not last, we're 6%.